so something that you guys should know is that I am guilty of being a pop music hater. And this isn't in an intentional way. I'm not one of those, oh, well, I listen to musicals and so my taste is so much better than yours kind of people. Rather, it's completely unintentional. I've just never found a pop musician that I've been able to latch onto and that I really like because I like narrative driven music and pop music for the radio doesn't necessarily always have that same vibe. But the reason why I'm bringing this up is because when it comes to Has Been Hotel and the eight songs that we have so far, some of you guys may think that because I don't like pop music that I would like one of the more traditional songs the best. But it is actually Respectless that has latched onto my brain the most and so I am dying to talk about it, pun fully intended. Good day everybody, it is Kalaxin here to nerd out on Kalaxin Cares Too Much about something that maybe only I care about. But since Has Been Hotel is so insanely popular right now, I'm hoping at least one other person will care to hear a musical theater professional's analysis on the instrumentation, rhythm, lyrics, and characterization to discuss what works and what does not phrase by phrase. Because even though this is my favorite song, I still have criticisms of it. However, I don't think it's enough to just point out the imperfections, but also to discuss whether or not those imperfections are enough to hurt or if they actually elevate the experience for the audience, because there's a difference between making something intentionally imperfect and things just being unpolished, which I think is a very important distinction as we go into this. So let's discuss the instrumentation first, because when Carmela sings, she has this Spanish sounding guitar. I'm not exactly sure what instrument it is, but I think that this was used to contrast Carmilla's age compared to Velvet, since it has a more old time sound compared to the pop and hip hop mix. It sounds like something maybe your grandparents would listen to. I know that my grandparents listen to music like that. And we don't have the official instrumental yet, so it is a bit hard to pick out certain instruments, but when Carmela is not singing, outside of the main strums that are the loudest, there's these quick little strums that seem to join back with the big main strum and grow together on her final lines. And as I said, because we don't have a clean instrumental yet, there could be some other things going on. But to me, there's some really good reactive musical theater elements in that. You have these main strums and then you have the quick little ones and it's like her temper is simmering. And then they come together and they both crescendo upward. However, when it comes to the lyrics and the rhythm, that's where I'm casting a little bit of suspicion on this part. All right, so when it comes to the first line, I do like the alliteration on show and then some show some respect has a good bite to it. But the opening phrase is a little bit awkward to sing. It's similar to as we talked about in the Wish video, isn't truth supposed to set you free? This also kind of suffers from that problem where it's you better show some respect. I think for the Wish example, the neat one was if I could show you everything I've seen. And so you hear how that's even just spoken is a bit cleaner than you better show some respect. You guys can also see that in terms of the syllable count, we have some weird stuff stuff going on, where it feels like, especially this really long eight, that no one speaks to Zestiel that way, like all of the words are crammed in. And so I feel like that, especially with this part, I don't know why they didn't just do show some respect, check your behavior. There is something nice happening though with respect and check. If it was checked, it would have rhymed apparently. So it's not exactly a rhyme, it's just a nice little, I, I would hesitate to even call it alliteration. It's a little brain tickle. There's something nice about it. Similar to show in some, there is is something nice happening with speaks and zest still. There's just too much crammed in here. All right, so the next line really bothers me because I don't like how they did a middle rhyme after doing an ending rhyme. You better show some respect. Did you expect us? So you have respect and then expect us. And I think that that's no good. We don't like that because internal rhymes are fine. This is uh, getting ahead of ourselves, but we have V's and wannabes as an internal rhyme. That's fine. But you can't switch from the end rhyme to making it internal. And I really don't understand why they did this because they could have just done show some respect, check your behavior. And then did you expect we'd sit back and take your, you, you didn't need to say us. Take your and behavior does work. And it's going to depend a lot on how the singer pronounces it so people have to make sure that they say it correctly if they're gonna do covers of the songs. Just keep in mind that the only reason why it rhymes is because of how it is said. For example, in the villain song that I wrote and that I showcased a little bit of last week, I have a rhyme with war and sure, like I'm sure. But if you said sure, that's not good, <laughs> you know? And so you have to keep in mind how it's pronounced because sure and sure are both 
valid pronunciations, but you have to be careful because if you said behavior, like it would not be the same. <laughs> and then weigh and display are fine. Again, I do think that there are inconsistencies with the rhythm that should have been addressed just because there's nothing familiar about this. It's hard as a singer. And just even while you're listening to expect what comes next. And last week we did talk about how musical theater is about you want to get your audience familiar and then lock them in so they are along for the ride so they know what's coming and with this it's just like I have no idea what's coming because there's no consistency do you expect us is not the same syllable count as you better show some respect when they could have made it the same and then we could have snapped into the song and it would have been familiar I do like the words that Carmilla uses though because we have a good sense of how she carries herself through these lyrics insolent brazen display it unironically reminds me of Frollo being like such a disgusting display like it just suits her the words that she's using it gives her that authority and that she's someone in a position of power and it has judgment attached to it I just wish that they cleaned all of this up because it's just a little bit messy and I proposed the fixes in three seconds and so I'm not entirely sure what happened here so these are all of Velvet's verses but before we get into that let's talk about the instrumental because I really really like the instruments used here it reminds me of six and like not just because she's British or anything in terms of mixing those pop elements with the musical theater element and even the beat I don't know I don't listen to a lot of pop music so I guess the dubstep like beat going on in the back I'm not entirely sure but it does remind me of get down and some of the other songs from six but what I really like about the instrument mix is that it's not just instruments you normally find in a pop song for example the strings in particular are really hitting and I love you guys know I love string instruments so maybe a little bit of bias but it really lets us into Velvet's character because she's hip and she's trendy but she's also classy and I love the violins to showcase that. So already with Velvet's lyrics they're a lot tighter in comparison to Carmilla and it in twist starts us out very strong. It's not exactly alliteration or a rhyme it's just something that makes the words spin around. And then we already talked about the idea of where to stress as a singer so I'm not the one who needs a new attitude. That is very very clean and the fact that there's not need and new all as alliteration is very very nice I also like maybe and missed for that same reason I will say that missed it and twisted it's not enough to do ed or ing the middle of a word also has to rhyme to make it a good rhyme if you want to call it that but I will say that I think the singer handles it well because you can't really tell that it's twisted right she doesn't really enunciate that other t and so it's smoothed over it all irons itself out for example I'm from Toronto and a lot of people will say Toronto they won't pronounce it like Toronto and so they do a good job of hiding the other T in twisted we kind of gloss past that T in order to hide it and then the missed it is a much cleaner rhyme and that was a very good idea this is a good time to mention but I just love the vocal performance I thought it was so well done but and bitch have a very nice bite to it but just the acting that the singer does on bitch like it just it catches me off guard every time and I'm like oh my goodness right and so it it gives you that nice bite, like the claws are coming out. There's something so biting about it without her yelling. And you guys will notice here that the syllables are uneven. However, Has Been Hotel does a really neat trick to circumvent that or get past that because there's basically two ways that these situations usually end up. And it's not just Has Been, it's just that I'm juggling so many Has Been Hotel scripts right now. But there are two strategies for when you have an uneven bar like this. The cram it all in the front strategy, which is what Wish did. And then what this song also did earlier with the no one speaks to Zestiel that way, like how it's uneven. You will have, say it's a, an eighth note they'll make it two sixteenth notes or something like that so the actual bar works out to be the same but then it's awkward for us not to get into music theory I wanted to make sure that this channel didn't have too much music theory I wanted to make sure that it's still accessible to people that don't understand but all you need to know is it's just that there's two sixteenth notes for no one and then show will be an eighth note and that's kind of how they cheat it to make sure the bar you want your bar to all equal the same and so sometimes what they'll do is cram syllables in the front and then just make them for a short 
shorter duration so the time ends up all being equal however that makes it awkward for us because then when we listen to it we're like there's a whole extra syllable in here but what I've noticed is that when has been does this they do something very smart where they will extend a word Charlie has I can do this somehow I know it there's just no way breath I could blow it so what's happening here is because she's taking a breath it makes it less noticeable and everything equals out in the end it's basically a strategy to line up uneven lyrics if you take the breath in the middle people won't notice as much because you're still on the same train track if you cram in all your syllables at the beginning people will notice because they'll know it's not the same thing that they heard before but that strategy with Charlie I think it's also happening here when she says bitch that extends the phrase and so I think that we do end up getting to what would be in the sheet music at least 11 beats even if it's not 11 syllables I thought that please and these was really clever and I like again because there's this structure you can anticipate the rhyme and even though there is that unevenness I think that they are implementing the same trick as before where somewhere in this seven there is a breath backbone has a really nice bite to it and I also like nothing less but I can't put my finger on why sometimes even for me there's some things that I can't quite figure out I don't know if it's just hitting my ears right or if there's a technical term for things like that but that's why we have the comment section because we can all talk about it together oh and I thought respectless and respect this was done super super well and at first I was side eyeing like going into this video I was like there's no way that respectless is an actual word and I'm gonna have to clock them but no respectless is a word it goes all the way back to I think the 1800s when I looked it up so it's not that she's just making up a word and I think that's really clever as a point of characterization a lot of people thought that velvet was going to be this teenage stereotype I guess especially with all the social media but this line shows her intelligence in universe because you wouldn't think that that's just a word you kind of think that she's just making something up but actually it is a word and it's a very old fashioned sort of word and so I think that that's really really good I really like the cousin no one could respect this line because I think that it has a double meaning your first instinct is to think this sorry group attending she's continuing her sentence no one could respect this sorry group attending so how could I because you guys are all cowards how could I respect you but I think she's also saying no one could respect this like about herself and so there's a nice double implication that she is only disrespecting them because they disrespected her first by completely shutting down her point so it's respect this but also respect this respect you guys in terms of the instrumental we have some brass coming in and this changes it up from being repetitive and also gives us some underlying anger or intensity I am still working on the Preminger video by the way I didn't forget you guys but I did want to get these out fast because has been hotel is coming out weekly and everything like that but in Preminger's song there are some brass instruments that sound like the war horns when you're going to war with someone and you're giving them warning and that's what the brass instruments in here sound like to me and so it's not only to change up the color of the instrumental but also like this is serious we are going to war they are war trumpeting noises but I do wish that after Carmilla's interruption they did a key change or something and we'll get to that later but I think that the lyrics are definitely the tightest in this verse there is again the weird syllable thing happening but I think that they do the extension trick again so we rescue ourselves we save ourselves but this is really nice the sorry since and then sorry again and then the your and then you like how they organize the alliteration in this line is really really nice and then bay but that was also really really good but yeah I like the sorry and then scared and then since that has a really nice sound to the ear and characterization wise I love how she's goading them especially with since when our overlords too scared to fight that is a challenge in the last verse she's establishing her own dominance and now she's actually challenging them which again maybe why the brass joined in because we have going to war kind of vibes and usually I cringe when songs use references like this obviously Obviously, or maybe it's not obvious if you guys don't know it's a tinder reference like you swipe right on tinder but I think that it actually works for me because it's not just like we're so cool I think that it's actually very clever because tinder is for finding relationships and so to me she's saying that none of them are good partners because they're cowards like in terms of allies they aren't attractive to her because of their cowardice and yeah long past trending is self-explanatory I like relevance and intelligence that was really nice and then also we and without just for what I talked about before in terms of making something flow nicely if the stresses have the same consonant it just helps I'm not sure about can't though as a word I do like can't and then act I don't know why but again little brain tingly thing it's not exactly a rhyme or anything I think it's just because they both end in t but there's something nice about that but I feel like that can't 
I don't know, because Zestiel talks in a very old, almost Shakespearean type way throughout the episode. He's like, where have thou been, you know? And so it's just weird that he says can't. I wonder if maybe he should have said shan't, but you could also interpret this as he's trying to talk more modernly because he's just been accused of being a fossil. Maybe it's to dispel that accusation, but I only got, oh, the writers forgot that he talks in old Shakespearean English, so I don't know. I don't know if it was intentional or not, but you could read it that way. It's not the most grievous offense compared to with some of the other songs in the show, which we'll talk about another time because there's one in particular where I'm like, wow, the lyrics are really, really bad. Now, Respectless and Breakfast is not a perfect rhyme, but as I talked about, I want to highlight that sometimes imperfections are not mistakes. What I like about this is that Breakfast has a nice, like, bite to it. It has that T. And so with an imperfect sort of rhyme here, it actually has more bite to it. It draws attention to her words. I do like how in terms of the instrumentals. They mixed in Carmela's instruments with the already established V sound, but again, I do feel like that it's after this point where they should have done a key change or something, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but I just feel like she interrupts, so I wanted it to grow. I wanted it to change somehow. I don't think that we should have gone back to what we knew already. And similar to before, they just gave her weak lyrics, and I'm not entirely sure why. She's saying that Velvet and the other Vs are inane, which is like silly and stupid, and uninformed, and I guess it's uninformed at the facts of their situation or uninformed about how things are done here because maybe they're relatively new overlords. We talked about the idea of them being new money, whereas Carmilla and Zestiel, they're more old money and that being a kind of metaphor, but it feels forced and a little too vague to be a valid jab against Velvet and then also to tell the audience anything because as I mentioned in previous videos, musical theater songs should be giving us information and so vagueness does not really help us. We don't know why they're uninformed. I do like V's and wannabes. I think that was pretty clever, but where I have beef is that I don't like heed. I think that that's just unnecessary and usually it comes off as the lyricist flexing because it's an odd number. It's like, oh, we needed to cram another one in there to show how smart we are. Internal rhymes, at least I think this is my, I don't know, personal taste. This isn't a rule. Nobody told me that this is a rule, but my personal taste is they have to be even and this is not even. Something coming in threes like this, like there should be another one up in the first line. And as a Solution, they could have done something like you and the V's all mislead and misinform smug wannabes who don't heed. That way, say the implication is that the V's mislead and misinform the masses, especially as a reference to Fox and internet culture. Like in Vox's song, there are some lines that allude to the fact that he is pulling the wool over people's eyes as the slick, fast talking salesman character archetype, but obviously it's for his TV show. So they could have done something like that because we've already seen by the time this song happens in episode three, the Vox song happens in episode two, so we as the audience is like, yeah, they do mislead people. And then in that same episode, we also have Vox selling the Angel security system, which probably won't end up even doing anything to protect anyone. So at least as the audience, if they said mislead and misinform, we know they're misleading us because they're saying that they have some Angel security lab tech and Vox admits that he thought of it five minutes ago to use the public sphere against them. And then also the idea that they will misinform the public about the facts about what has happened. And obviously Velvet hasn't told the public yet, but Carmilla could be referencing that in regards to the things that they've already done. This isn't the first time that they've misinformed or lied to the public for their own personal gain. And the public doesn't really understand what's at stake here if they went to war with the angels. Because as I said, Vox already does mislead and misinform with the angel security, the stuff that he says about Alistair in his song. So we would already know that from episode two and we would know what she's talking about and it wouldn't be so vague. So I do have a problem with uninformed and warned. That does not rhyme. That is like rhyming singing and working. Singing and ringing rhymes because the middle part of rhymes, so you can't just rhyme ED with ED. Like this does not work. And so I think that what they should have done is you and the V's all mislead and misinform smug wannabes who don't heed the gathering storm. They could have done that. So if we go with mislead and misinform storm, that gets rid of the ED situation and so we're focusing on the middle part and then that would make it rhyme and that could also be a biblical reference storm reckoning that sort of thing so back to the instrumental there is a nice gong sound effect in here and that makes it sound like end of days end of the world but my only criticism is that with the rest of velvet's part musically i just wish that they did more to change this part because the music is the same but some of the rhythms are different and that makes it really jarring i think that the syllable count just deviates when 
way too much. That 9-9 nine, nine right before we're dealing with 11-10 and then somehow they're able to stretch it to trick our brains. I talked about that before. But the 9-9 nine, nine is really noticeable, but the music hasn't changed as much. And so it's awkward if you're trying to sing because the, what you knew before doesn't make any sense anymore. I'm not the one who needs a new attitude Since when our overlords too scared to fight Cause when I brought out the angels it's musically too similar and now this verse just it sounds a little wrong like it just sounds sort of wrong and i do like the descent on turning red that your wrinkled face was turning red that the singer does, but I just wish that they made it a little less familiar to us because then these syllable things wouldn't be as noticeable. But especially since they're at the ending, I just wish that they had done something like a key change. And if I do that successfully, I'll let you know, I'll put it here. Because I'm thinking of something dramatic. I'm thinking of like, oops, did I strike a nerve? Cause when I brought out the angel's head. And like, I don't know if she can belt that high. I personally can't because I'm a soprano. So I would do a very Julie Andrews like, <laughs> like I would do something like that, which is not, that's not the vibe, that's not the style, but I want them to go like big. I want her to do a completely different, like we're in a different key. She is belting, she's doing a whistle note. I don't know. I would have liked them to do something very dramatic here. I was a little suspicious of the syllable count. I put six question mark because I wasn't sure, but I think that oops even things out because did I strike a nerve? That's only five. So I think that oops is our six. I like nerve and observe. At first I wasn't sure about Observe when I first listened to it in our reaction. I thought that that was like, eh, I don't know about that. That's kind of weird. It's the same as Disclosure later on. I was like, mm, I don't know. But as I thought about it more, I think that that's a jab at her. It's condescending. It's like, I couldn't help but observe this. She's trying to talk in that sort of professional, like, you want professional? I'll talk about professional. I couldn't help but observe. So it's a bit condescending and I like that. Also, Wrinkled, another jab that she is old. I wasn't sure how to feel about turning red. That's what I was like, hmm, I'm not sure about that because later Carmilla also has a line in her song that she has blood on her face. And I was like, mm, you don't have blood on your face. You have blood on your hands, bestie. But anyway, it's that we'll talk about that when we get there. But I think that fine, turning red could be from embarrassment. Like she didn't cover up the angel's death well enough. So it may be fine. It's just that I associate turning red with being embarrassed versus upset. And I thought that she was trying to say that Carmilla seemed upset, but maybe she is saying that she's embarrassed. It's unfortunate because the other lyrics are so tight, but we did lose some of the nice alliteration that the other verses had. But yeah, this may be hard for you guys to read, but just to show them all three in comparison to each other, I'm not the one who needs a new attitude, right? Cause when I brought out the angel's head, there's nothing clever like that in there. That being said though, why, what, and then war, that was all really, really nice. I also love how the singer does you. I did a little italics right there for that. Why are you avoiding war? That's what the guns you sell are for. You. And then and and avoiding. I thought that that was really good. Avoiding war and then sell R4 is another good little alliteration, like avoiding and then R. And I really like selling and starting and suspect because it makes it sound like all these words are connected. Velvet is starting to suspect the reason why Carmilla doesn't want to admit that her weapons killed the angels is because if the angels find out, she could be a target. So sell, starting, and suspect are all about her guilt. They're all why she's guilty. And so it's really clean that they all start with the same letter. Like she's starting to suspect that it's the guns that she sold. That's the reason why for her guilt. I will say though, respectless, suspect is, and headless really bothers me because suspect is and respectless is such a good rhyme. Whereas headless is nothing. Like headless is like, give us nothing. It only has the list, which I've already explained. That's a lazy rhyme. They had something going really clever. They had something clever going on here. And then they put in headless, which is back to us being mid. And I don't know why they did that. If you have a trio of rhymes like this, it's fine, but they should be growing in further intensity. They should not be pulling backward. They could have done, you know, the angels won't forget this as in, because you know, they'll trace this back to you. That is why you don't want to talk about it because we've already established there's some repetitiveness in here as well. Like she doesn't need
need to say, because when I brought out the angel's head, and then also, you know why this angel's headless, we've already established the fact that Velvet knows or at least thinks that she's guilty. And so we didn't need Velvet to spell it out that she suspects Carmilla, because that's what this verse is for. So instead, we could have had new information, which is what I'm starting to suspect is the reason why you won't tell us anything is because you're afraid for your own skin, which we find out in Carmilla's song. She's worried about her daughters. Then we could have had Velvet saying, I think you're starting to worry because it was your weapons and you know that the angels won't forget this, that they will declare war on you and they'll take it personally. That would have been a really nice line. And as I said, at first, I just wasn't really sure of the word disclosure, but I do like it now because it sounds more purposefully condescending. It's almost like in Velvet's mind, she's like, oh, okay, well, if I wasn't being business enough for you, I'm going to use the business words to expose her. And I like that. So the only thing I'm not sure about is Carmilla getting the last word here. And this is only because, and this isn't a technical thing. It's not like in the songwriting book, you know, where we talk about like rhyming and everything. There's some sort of technical rule that says that you can't do this. It's just going to be a matter of opinion. I'm not sure how I feel about it though, because I feel like that Velvet should have gotten the last word because something that we are taught is that characters wins and losses, right? Wins and losses in regards to stakes. So Velvet sung this entire song, but Carmilla having the last word makes it seem like Velvet lost the argument, which is a bit odd. It's not to say that your character can't have a loss, but it feels like that we didn't really accomplish anything. And then Velvet's facial expression, if she smiled at her, I believe she does frown. If she smiled at Carmilla, I would have been like, yes, bitch, you wanted to get a reaction out of her, so now you're smiling because you did it. But she frowns, and so it makes it feel like they just came to a stalemate, whereas you could do one of two things here. You can change the line to have Carmilla interrupt and then Velvet respond, or you could change the animation so she's smiling because she's like, ah, I got you, bitch, right? But I don't know if I like the fact that Carmilla has the last line and it's played as a loss. So for example, I wonder if they could have done something like this instead, where Carmilla says, we will speak of this no more, and Velvet says, I have what I came for, as in, that's fine, I have what I came for, I know what I wanted to know, I learned what I wanted, and then that way it would have ended in a win. But that being said, despite all the issues that I pointed out, I do think that this song is so catchy, it's so fun, and I feel like outside of, it's Carmilla, it's always Carmilla at the scene of the crime, like she's the one that has the bad lyrics for some reason, or like the rhythm problems. I feel like that outside of Carmilla's opening and her interruption, where these problems, if you want to call it that, are really noticeable, any other imperfections in the song are done intentionally and they don't impact the catchiness, like the stuff that we talked about going on in Velvet's verse with some extensions of the syllables. They were done intentionally, again, like breakfast, right, and respectless. That was done intentionally, and so I feel like that it actually works and it heightens the catchiness of the song instead of just being a mistake. And so I think that the moral of this video, right, if I wanted you to take away anything, just a one lesson with this one song, as opposed to stuff that we've talked about in previous videos, this is a lesson on when you are allowed to be imperfect, when it is clever to do something that's imperfect versus as when it'll read to the audience as a mistake and stuff like Breakfast and Respectless and some of the other stuff I mentioned, that is like, oh, okay, that's a purposeful imperfection that gives the song a bite versus the other stuff that we talked about where the syllables were all over the place and that doesn't give the audience any security or familiarity. And so the difference between those things. And you can see that showcased really well in this song. I wish they cleaned it up a bit, but I love it. I have it on repeat. It's so catchy. Like it just hooks you. It gets right in there in terms of my brain. I think it's so good. And the singer performs it really, really well. So this has been a hopefully rather short analysis of Respectless. It is a short song. So hopefully this video is not too long for you guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed. And this has been Kalaxin caring way too much about something that hopefully you now care about. And I will see you next time. Bye.